Well, good morning. Holy sacrifice, offer living intentions of Fred and Julie Walls. As we come to the final of the three manifestations, as the church traditionally has called them, beginning with the Epiphany, that was two weeks ago. Last week was the baptism of the Lord, and today is our Lord's first miracle, the wedding feast of Cana, when he shows forth his, his power um, as God, the God-man. And perhaps there are three considerations for us um, in this gospel today. First, that our Lord chose a wedding feast to perform his first miracle, to change water into wine. It wasn't by chance. Nothing is by chance with Almighty God. There is no chance. People talk about chance, coincidence. Nothing is the case with God. And so here, our Lord sanctifies marriage. This is where we, we don't see him actually give the sacrament of matrimony like we do with baptism. Go baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or the Eucharist. Take this off of you. This is my vice and my blood. Nevertheless, we know our Lord gave us all seven sacraments. Outward sign, instituted by Christ, gives grace. The basic definition for all seven. Matrimony is one of those. Okay. Fidelity, indissolubility, openness to children, right? The three properties, perfections within the married state that all of you have. And it's something where we see again the importance of marriage. Where our Lord comes, when he creates a human race, marriage. Not good for the man to be alone. Be fruitful and multiply. Openness to children. Secondly, when our Lord becomes man, it's within a, within a marriage, within a family. Okay? Our Lady, St. Joseph, and our Lord. Okay? The Holy Family. The example for every family. Okay? And then we see here the gospel. Okay? First, first miracle at a wedding feast. And this is, so the bedrock of the basic foundation of society is the family. So goes the family, so goes society. Okay? And the devil hates the family. Why does he hate your family? Why does he hate marriage? Because it's a reflection of the Trinity. Let us make man in our image. God's not a solitary being. A solitary being can't love. Actually, the solitary being has to do something outside of himself in order to be able to love, to give of himself. Therefore, God's not perfect if that's the case. But God's perfect. So there's a communion of persons within the Trinity, right? God is love. So that union between the three persons, the mystical union, the Trinity, that when he creates the human race, marriage and family is how he does it. Even within the consecrated state, I'm married to the church. Okay. A a religious sister, a nun, oftentimes they wear a wedding band. They're the brides of Christ. You listen to their language, very much so. Okay. So we, in, the, in the working, the lived out experience of the church, it's marriage, marriage, marriage. Okay. But the devil hates it. Because it's a reflection of the Trinity. It's a reflection of God. So all the more for us as Catholics, as Christians, in our, in our society, in our world. Oh yes, let the light shine. Let your marriage, let your, the joy and the peace, the love in your, in your family shine. For sure. The world needs to see it. The devil tries to crowd it out. Okay. And then secondly, we see that our Lord works the miracle. Why? His first miracle. He works it because his mother asked him to do it. It's an interesting use of words here between our blessed mother and our Lord. Because first of all, Here's the, a human person being able to say to Almighty God, Son, right? That's her role. He gave her that role. She can speak to him as a mother to a son. Why people don't go to Our Lady and ask her to speak to her son more? It's, it's, a, it's a loss on their part. Right? But we know through our, you know, asking Our Lady for her prayers how powerful they are. So Our Lady goes to our Lord and says, Son, they have no more wine. Now, as he's God, he knows it. He knows they have no more wine. But this is how he chooses to do this. He chooses to enlist you and I in redemption and working out his plans. He could have done it all by himself. He chose to become a child in the womb of Our Lady. He chose to use her, to need her, to need St. Joseph. He 
chooses to need you and me. He could take care of all the ills of the world in a moment, done over. But he doesn't do it that way. Because you and I get off the hook that way. Where's our virtue in that? No, actually, zeal, courage, patience, perseverance, those are the virtues he wants us to use. Okay? Ingenuity. And then how does our Lord respond to our Blessed Mother? You know, so Our Lady is the true feminine, right? She notices the sensitivity characteristic of a feminine genius. She sees that they're without, they've run out. No one else really has seen this yet. She's seen it. And so she goes to, and she goes to her son. And how's his, how does he respond? It's an interesting take that some people uh, misunderstand. Woman, how does this concern of yours affect me? My hour has not yet come. So the hour for Christ is the cross. And Our Lady would have would had a sense of this, okay, perhaps, because okay, her mind is not darkened at all as a result of original sin. She's the greatest human mind ever. Okay? Our Lord is God, so it's a, another level. But with the Blessed Mother, oh no, she's able to put things together in ways that we can't. But yet our Lord reminds her, it's like, if I do this, I'm going to the cross. The hour for Christ, when he's glorified, that's the Christian Catholic paradox. That's glory. But to the secular, no. But to the Christian, yes. Okay? So our Lord says, I do this, I'm going to the cross. It started. And our Lord does refer to his, 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 his mother as woman. I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage any of you young boys to do this, to refer to your mother as woman. It doesn't work out so well. But when you hear our Lord's word here, why? Why is that not a, a slight? In English, it comes across, you know, our Lord didn't speak English. He spoke Aramaic. John's gospel was written in Greek. But that term woman... And our Lord used it again on the, at the cross, right? Woman, behold a son, son, behold a mother. So at the beginning of his public ministry, at the end of his public ministry, Mary, like Eve, who's given that title of woman by, by Adam, Eve was the mother of all the living, correct? Blessed Mother is the mother of all the spiritual living. That's her role. She's a mother. And she takes that role seriously. If, but she won't impose herself. But when we enlist her help, She's a mother. She's the most powerful mother who crushes. There's a reason why that serpent is always underneath her feet, underneath the statue of Our Lady of Grace. She crushes his head in her own humble, powerful way, our Lord, because she said yes to her. So she is the mother of all the spiritual living. So some would say that's a slight. It's not a slight at all, actually. It's just a misunderstanding, complete misunderstanding of our Lord in interacting with his mother. St. John Paul II has a beautiful quote on this um, when he writes in his, uh, in his encyclical on uh, the mother of the Redeemer. Way back in 1987, he wrote this. Um, he says this, At Canaan and Galilee, there is shown only one concrete aspect of human need, apparently a tiny one and of little importance. They have no wine. But it has a symbolic virtue a symbolic value. This coming to the aid of human needs means at the same time bringing those needs within the radius of Christ's messianic mission and salvific power. Thus there is a, med a mediation. Mary places herself between her son and mankind in the reality of their wants, needs, and sufferings. In her position as mother, she puts herself in the middle that is to say, she acts as a mediatrix, not as an outsider. She knows that in this way, she can point out to her son the needs of mankind, and in fact, she has the right to do so. Those are St. John Paul's words uh, about Our Lady as, as the mother of, of all of us, um, as she is. And then finally, we see that our Lord Works the miracle. He turns, and of course, our Blessed Mother says, you know, do whatever he tells you, and this is what she tells you and me. Do whatever he tells you. Devotion to Blessed Mother always leads to Jesus, right? She's always pointing us to her son. And that's another misunderstanding that, you know, others just, 
they misunderstand the proper devotion to Blessed Mother, right? And the love that we have for her and her intercession for us as our spiritual mother uh, to her son and how he has set this up. But our Lord does what? He tells the servants to go and fill up the water jars. Now, St. John is very specific. He was an eyewitness. So the first time he met our Lord, he says it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, here he says he gives us the number of jars and how much they're going to hold. It's that. It's made this much of an impression upon him. Uh, he was there. Uh, well over 100 gallons of wine our Lord, uh, you know, makes here uh, out of the water. So he takes what is stale, what is just kind of bland, okay, water, um, and he he makes this, this perfect wine, uh, far beyond what the servants could have expected. They had no idea, but they actually obeyed him. He says, go fill those, and they did. And then they had to obey him when he said, take some to the head waiter, and they did it. How many of us would balk at it? How many would say, what's the use? I mean, that's, that's water. We're not filling those jars. It's a waste of time. How many of us would come up with excuses? Like, well, I know I need to pray, but it's just, what's, that, what, what's my prayer going to have on this impact of this person's faith? Well, I know I'm supposed to, you know, do my little mundane chore, but what's, it's just, it's a waste of time. Why taking out the trash or sweeping the floor, or, you know, mending that, you know, that sweater, you know, finishing that last bit of uh, homework. What's, it's just, what does that matter? Oh, it matters. And our Lord can use it in ways that we don't see. So the servants obeyed. They simply, they, they just obeyed. And what, what does the Lord do? With their simple act of filling those jars of water, oh, he, he makes something tremendous. And that's what he does with our simple acts, our simple duties every day when we unite them with his. And that's the lesson here that the, the servants didn't fill those jars up halfway. They filled them up to the brim. They did their best. They put it there to the top. Same with us. It's all with God's grace, of course, but he's given us these gifts and talents. He wa doesn't want us to bury them like the, th like the third man, of, when they give them the, the talents, the two guys double their talents, the third one buries it. No, our Lord wants us to use them for his greater honor and glory, not for mine, for his greater honor and glory. Love of God, love of the neighbor. So those, are my, those would be my joys, those would be my sufferings, my sacrifices, inconveniences, frustrations of life every day that go along with life. And it all starts, it starts with my, my morning prayer so I can have that focus. So I see, things, I, I see things in a different way. So I'm not thrown off. I still have my peace. It's like, oh, okay, Lord, another opportunity there. Okay, all right, didn't expect that one. I mean, that's, it, and it's, Again, you go back to marriage, you go back to family life, plenty of opportunities for this, right? right. Plenty. Uh, so it's, it's this little hidden mysterious meaning of this gospel passage that our Lord wants us to give him the best each day. Yesterday's gone. I can learn from it. Tomorrow's not here. I don't need to worry about it today, just today. And here we are at Mass. The greatest thing we can do, actually. The greatest, it's a feast of heaven, right? It's the marriage feast of heaven. Okay? This is what we say, isn't it, right before we receive Holy Communion every, every day. So we ask Our Lady to help us to have this, this deeper sense of giving our best to our Lord as she did just in the mundane tasks of life. Right? So our Lord can use them in ways that we, we, can't, we, we can't see. Uh, but he wants us to be there. He wants, he's put me in that place for a reason. Okay. May Almighty God bless you through the Mac at Heart of